fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Mountain City. Hell, Silver. Power! Jacob Webster sat at his desk in the office of the Webster Trading Company at Mountain City. Across from him was Walter Driscoll, his local manager. The older, heavier man finished checking the report in front of him and then raised his eyes to Driscoll. Well, it's better than last month, Jake. I'll bet that Great Western bought more four furs than we did. That can't be helped, not yet. This company got a bad name during the spring. We've got to live it down. It takes too long. I've decided to stop wasting time. What more can we do than we're doing? Buy out Great Western. You know that Mark Collins won't sell out to you. You tried to force her to do it once and it didn't work. Yeah, thanks to the Lone Ranger. He's still around here. Don't get rid of him so easy. It isn't necessary to use force when you have money. Jake, your money won't do you any good in this case. Why won't it? Because... Just answer me this. What's the highest valuation you'd put on Great Western? Furs, trading goods, cash, and goodwill. Well, it's only local, of course. I'd say $50,000. Yes, so would I. We'll offer Mark Collins $100,000. $100,000? You going loco? Or is there some trick to it? There's no trick. We offer 100000 in cold cash. That's paying 50000 for nothing. It eliminates our competition. Can't call that nothing. Mighty high price for it. Yeah, we'll make it back. After Great Western is bought out, then the Webster Company is the only place where trappers can sell their furs. We'll pay them just half as much as they're getting now. Yeah, that's possible. Our profits double. We'll make back the extra 50000 in no time. But the Collins are funny. Money doesn't mean as much to them as it does to most people. Yeah, we'll see. I make my offer tonight. One hundred thousand dollars, huh? What's up your sleeve this time, Webster? Nothing at all. You can't expect more of me to believe that. Well, this is a confession of defeat. I've tried to get your company at my own price, and, well, I've failed. But I still want it. Great Western ain't worth a hundred thousand. Well, if I only paid you what it was worth, you wouldn't sell. And there must be a trick in it. I'll pay you by check or cash, whichever you want. You'll have the money in your hands before you sign the bill of sale. Huh. I declare, don't seem to be any loophole at all. Be careful, Ma. Oh, don't you worry. I'm not going to say yes or no right off. Think it over as long as you want to. You come back tomorrow morning. I'll have my answer then. That's fine, Mrs. Collins. Until tomorrow morning. Good night. Madge, where's Johnny tonight? At his office by the jail. Well, go and get him. Uh, no, wait. 
There's no sense in bringing him here. I was just going to say that Johnny can't help you make up your mind. It's the Lone Ranger I want to talk to, Madge, and Johnny's the only one who can find him. Well, Johnny used to know where his camp was, but maybe it's moved. Well, tell him to keep looking. I'm not going to have any dealing with Webster until I talk to the Lone Ranger first. <laughs> Mrs. Collins? That's all. Simple as ABC. He'll pay me the money in cold cash before I sign a bill of sale. As Marshal of Mountain City, I advise you against doing business with Webster. You keep quiet, Johnny. I'm much obliged to you for bringing the masked man here, but it's his advice I want, not yours. You'd be foolish not to accept the offer, Mrs. Collins. Well, that's the way it looks to me, on the surface. But what's behind it? Nothing that can hurt you. The Tappers won't like it very much, that's all. Why not? Well, you can't blame them. With no competition, Webster can pay them what he feels like for their furs. Hey, that's right. There'll be a lot of men coming in during the next few weeks, too. Well, the trappers are my friends. I'm not going to let anybody take advantage of them. My advice is uh, to accept the offer. What? Well, that don't sound like you, masked man. It'd be more than selling out the business. It'd be selling out our friends. It depends on how the bill of sale is worded. Now, uh, let me explain. <laughs> Finish reading the bill of sale, Mrs. Collins? I guess so. Everything's in order, isn't it? Well, there's just one thing I don't like. What's that? Uh, this here. The party of the second part agrees to. Oh, but I'm buying the Great Western name as well as the business. Oh, I don't care anything about the name. It's the rest of it. According to what it says there, I promise I won't ever start another fur trading post. Yes, you do. Well, I won't promise that. It's the only business I know. I'm not just going to sit in a rocking chair for the rest of my days and sew a fine seam. But if that clause wasn't in there, you could start a new business in Mountain City tomorrow. And the goodwill of the Great Western Company wouldn't mean a thing. Well, you've got to change it. I won't go into business here. I won't go into business anywhere within 100 miles of here. But nothing's going to stop me from trading in fur someplace. You change it to read like that and I'll sign. A uh, hundred miles, you said? That's right. Fair enough. That won't affect this market. We'll just add in Mountain City or within a radius of 100 miles. Now hand me those other copies, Walt, and we'll write it in. There you are. There's the full amount. Take care of it, Johnny. Yes, and I'll sign right here. Uh-huh. Move the lamp over a little, Madge. There. Mercy. Collins. Your turn, Webster. You can witness this, Walt. You too, Johnny. Sure, just pass it over when you're ready. <laughs> oh, by the way, now that the Great Western Company belongs to me, I've uh, got a little announcement that you can pass along to the trappers as they come into town. What's that? I'll wait until you're finished. Oh, I have. <laughs> well, then here's the announcement. Starting from this minute, the prices that we pay for furs are cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> in half? Now, what do you think of that? Mm, the trappers will be plenty made. They'll get over it. Not if there's someplace else where they can take their furs. But there won't be. <laughs> Don't be too sure. Well, Fort Hall's a long way, over 100 miles. They might not want to go that far. What's this about Fort Hall? That's where I'm going to start my new post. Yes, and unless I miss my guess, there'll be a big caravan starting from here as soon as you're open for business. The deal is off. Well, you can't be talking about the sale. I got my money. You got the papers. Well... She's been too smart for you, Jake. Is Jake just too smart for himself? Pay a decent price for furs and he'll keep his business. Try to cheat the trappers and he'll lose it. It's up to you, mister. I'm starting that new post so you can't take advantage of my friends. Come on, Driscoll, let's get out of here. Just as well close up the store, Jake. There hasn't been a trapper come in since you cut the prices. It's three days now. Well, they haven't left town. Well, they're all camped out on the meadows. About a hundred of them. But Mrs. Collins and her daughter are leaving for Fort Hall tomorrow morning. The trappers may follow them. We're going through with this, Walt. When they start leaving, you'll have to admit your beat. If I had to depend on you, I might be. What's that? Kurt Morgan's camped out near Circle Lake with all his men. I thought you were going to stay inside the law. I will. But Kurt doesn't mind breaking it. What are you going to have them do? Just get them to start operating between Mountain City and Fort Hall. 
Morgan can make that trail so unsafe the trappers won't dare take it. Yeah, he could at that. And he can start with the Collins stage. What's the old lady done with the cash I gave her? She put most of it in the bank. If she's starting a business, she'll have to take plenty of it with her. That ought to be enough inducement for Kurt. But say, if she never got to Fort Hall, we'd have nothing to worry about. You can pass that word along, too. If she doesn't get there, I'll pay a bonus of $5,000. Did you say me pass the word along? Do you think I'd trust anyone else? Yes, Walt. You're riding to Circle Lake tonight. Steady, Silver. I'll keep you, Sammy. It's Tonto. Wolf's come, poor fella. Oh, poor fella. <coughs> Nearly done, Tonto. You've been gone a long time. Ah, uh, me watch Driscoll, like you say. Him right out of town when it get dark last night. Where'd he go? All the way to Circle Lake. Circle Lake? Ah, uh, there are many men there. Outlaws? That's right. Tonto see face, the leader. Him, Kurt Morgan. Kurt Morgan? Ah. Uh. Morgan and Webster. It's a bad combination. Oh, uh, plenty bad. What are they planning? Uh, me not hear that. Webster may be trying to stop Mrs. Collins from getting to Fort Hall. Maybe so. We'll have to make sure that nothing happens to her. Yes, Silver. Are you sure we're on the trail of the outlaw's tunnel? Uh, and better we rain up now. Steady, Silver. Oh, steady, boy. Oh, oh. What's the matter? Uh, outlaw right down slope here. Maybe we see him below. Steady, big boy. We certainly don't want to ride into them. Oh. Better you keep close to trees. Yeah, this is far enough. What you see? They're down there in the pass, all right. The stagecoach has to go through there to get to Fort Hall. Uh. We've got to hit the back trail and stop it. Not right. Steady, big boy. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Ah. Too bad we couldn't have stopped it before it left Mountain City. And this not far from town. And they'll have to turn around and go back. Hold up! Oh, hold up there! Oh, hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! What is it? Road agents? No, ma'am. It's the Lone Ranger. There he is, Ma. There are outlaws winning in the past, Mrs. Collins. You'll have to turn back. Well, I've got to get to Fort Hall. And it won't be safe in the stage. You think you and your daughter could ride horseback all the way? I can. I don't know about Ma. Well, don't you worry about me. Of course I can. Then we'll get some horses in town, and Tonto will show you a safe trail through the mountains. Turn around, driver. Pino, get up there. Who are these outlaws? Kurt Morgan's gang. And there's a chance of catching them. How? Load as many men as you can into the stage, then follow it with the rest of your deputies. Uh, not too close, you understand. Nice, Happy. Morgan and his men will close in on the stage, and you can close in on them. Hey, sounds like it might work. Gather around, boys. I got orders from the Lone Ranger. All right. Slow down, Johnny. Pull your horse in. Lose inside of the stage. We're getting close to the pass. Slow down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, Silver. Easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, the gang is up on the slope. They see us behind the stage. They make a break for it. We won't have any chance of catching them. We'd be hit by the dust from the stage. Not from up above. But look, the stage is almost around the bend. And the pass is just beyond. And it does round the bend. And we can start riding again. All ready to go, boys. When the stage rounds the bend, lift those coyotes out of their tracks. I don't like to leave those boys on the stage alone too long. They won't be. They'll have plenty of cover. The driver's running up and getting under the boot at the first side of the gang. There she goes. The shooting already. Who on, Silver? Come on there, boy. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger, the Marshal, and his men raced around the bend, they saw the stagecoach pulled up just ahead of them. The firing had stopped. There was no sign of the outlaws. Where's 
the gang? Where are they going to? Over the ridge. They hightailed it. What happened anyway? It was my fault, Marshal. Caught sight of them on the slope and let them have it. I guess they saw how many guns we had in the coach and decided not to attack. You were supposed to let them fire first. Keep out of sight until they did. I just got excited. I'm sorry. Oh, this means our chance is gone. I'm afraid so, because they're well mounted. You wouldn't be able to catch them. What do we do, then? There's nothing for you and your men to do but ride back to town. I'm going to follow their trail and find out where they make camp. Come on, Silver! It was late that evening before the Lone Ranger returned to Mountain City. He reined up in the back of the marshal's office, slipped from the saddle, and knocked to the back door. Seems to be a lot of men out on the street. I wonder what's going on. Howdy, you got back all right. Yes, Johnny. Were you able to follow the trail? It wasn't hard. They're still camped out at Circle Lake. Can't we ride out there and clean them out? I don't think so. Morgan only sent a few of his men to hold up the stage. There are a lot of them at the lake, and they have a strong position. Ask Driscoll out in front. What's he yelling about? Well, let's find out. We don't have to go outside. Just open the window. Kino. I tell you, men are loco. You've still got all your furs piled up in your tents out in the meadow. You know that Kirk Morgan's up in the mountains? What's to stop him from staging a raid and robbing of everything you've got? Just let him try it. We'll fill him full of lies. Oh, you, you couldn't stand him off. He's got too many men. And he wouldn't give you any warning. If you want to save your furs, you better sell them to us right now. Not at your price. You're a cheap crook. Well, it's the only price you'll get. Make up your mind, sir. They're going after him, Johnny. Men, let him alone. In the name of the law. Go on home, Driscoll. I have to lock you up to save your neck. Oh, you're a pack of fools. The only trouble is it's true. Morgan could raid the town. I don't think he will. It's a different thing, Marshal, attacking the town and defending his camp. Besides, you've taken my advice, haven't you? You have guards posted? Yeah, but... The attack wouldn't come without warning. Yeah, maybe the furs are safe, but what good are they if they can't sell them? They can. They won't at Webster's price. Mrs. Collins will reach Fort Hall tomorrow. She'll buy them. You don't expect the men to take a chance on the trail, do you? And they'll have to sooner or later. But, mister, what chance would two or three trappers have against Morgan's men? It can't be two or three. All of them must leave at once. And they'll have a hundred rifles to protect their furs. Sure, a hundred rifles. It's the only way to manage it. Uh, but even so, it's going to take at least three days with pack horses and mules. That means two camps in the mountains. But I'm not saying there's no danger for Morgan. There is. Those men out there face danger every day of their lives. All they need is someone to organize them. You can leave it to me. I'll tell them just what you've said. Trappers welcomed the Lone Ranger's plan. They spent the next day in getting ready for the trail, and Johnny set the start for the following morning. But at midnight, three men met on the ridge above Circle Lake. Webster, Driscoll, and Kurt Morgan. So you came yourself, Webster. You told Walt that I had to, didn't you? Yeah, but you're so careful I didn't think you'd take a chance on talking with me. I need your help. Yeah, maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. I still haven't got over that stagecoach business. An old lady and her daughter. But what do we find instead? A wagon load of rifles and a posse riding behind. Surely you don't think I tipped off the marshal? Uh, you might have. I know a lot about you. Maybe it's too much. I know just as much about you. We have to trust each other. Yeah. With one eye watching out for a double cross. There's no chance of a double cross on this deal. I'll decide that. I just want to make sure you don't let those furs get through to Fort Hall. What if I do? What if the furs don't interest me? They're worth a fortune. At the prices you're paying? Now, look, Kurt, You I... look. I don't want to be bothered with a lot of furs. You can't move fast when you got pack horses and mules trailing after you. Kurt, raid the party. Drive off the men and burn the furs. Huh? Nothing could be safer than that. Ten thousand for the job. Ten thousand? You sure don't want Mrs. Collins to do any business? I sure don't. Uh... Just burn them up, huh? Well, that won't be much trouble. <laughs> you know, Jake, I, uh, I think you bought something. Oh, Scott, oh, Father. Oh, oh, Father. Tony Kimasabi. Welcome back, Tonto. 
Are Mrs. Collins and her daughter safe? Ah. You made good time from the fort. Ah. Uh, who that by fire? That's Driscoll. You aren't above the law, masked man. I'll have you thrown in jail for this. You take him prisoner? Yes. I persuaded him to pay our camp a little visit. He's uh, writing a letter to Colonel Graham. Oh, Tonto, not savvy. Why you make him write to Colonel? It's a little complicated, Tonto. A lot's happened since you left. But the explanations will have to wait. Sign the letter, Driscoll. What if I refuse? You won't. Well, this can't hurt me. Now, hand it over. Can I go back to town now? Not just yet. I'm going to borrow your horse for an hour or two. What for? What's the matter with your own? Might be recognized. Steady, boy. Where you go, Kimasabi? Big fella. I'm going to deliver this letter. Oh, Colonel, at Port, 100 miles away. It's addressed to the Colonel, but it wasn't meant for him. Make sure that Driscoll doesn't get away. Uh -huh. Come on, boy. Kurt makes us stand guard all night. Those fool trappers aren't going to come up here. Not if they know what's good for them. Hey, who's that? Can't be any of the boys. They're all in camp. Uh, soil. It must be. I'd better not take any chances. Stop or I shoot! Oh, Red. Taking the wrong trail. This must be Morgan's camp. Right up here with your hands above your head. Come on, Red. Stop! Some hombre took the wrong trail. Where is he? He wheeled his horse around there by the big tree and headed south. Didn't recognize him, huh? Well, I guess not. He was riding the soil. I thought it was Driscoll's at first, but the man was bigger. Hey, look there. Didn't he drop something? Well, not that I noticed. There's something white on the ground by the tree. Uh, just a piece of paper. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. That's all it is. What's a letter? Light a match. Uh, sure. To Colonel Graham, Fort Hall. I am writing this letter for Mr. Webster. He's obtained definite information that Kurt Morgan and his gang intend to... With a dirty double-crosser. Let's see who wrote this. Who? Hmm, I thought so. I thought I recognized the handwriting. Now what's up, boss? You were right. It was Driscoll Sorrow. Well, Driscoll wasn't riding it. I know that. He'd take a chance on his horse, but he wouldn't take a chance on himself. He hired somebody to deliver this. Hey, you didn't read it all, boss. What's the rest of it say? Never mind. Our plans are changed. You mean no raid tomorrow night? No raid. There won't be many people in town after the trappers leave. The marshal and all his deputies are going with them. I know. That's what you said. You and I are uh, paying a call on Jake Webster. The following night, Jacob Webster sat alone in his office. He was worried by the unexplainable absence of his manager... And when at last he heard someone rain up outside, he sprang to his feet. It's about time. Where's he been? Driscoll, what in the... Oh, it's you. Yeah, Kurt Morgan. What are you doing here? There's nobody around. I want to talk with you. Come on in, Joe. But you're supposed to be at Rocky Hollow. What about the raid? There's plenty of time for that. We got a morning to get there. Where are your men? Waiting. I just got thinking things over, Webster. Uh... You better pay me ahead of time. Right now. I'll pay you when the job is finished. You wouldn't argue with a six gun, would you? Oh. So this is a holdup. Oh, don't matter what you call it. Now just pick up all the money you find in that safe, Joe. Kino. It's all there, ten thousand dollars. It was waiting for you. Oh, that surprises me. Count it, Joe. It's all there. Now go on. You've got a long, hard ride if you're gonna make it to Rocky Hollow before dawn. Uh Joe and I got just one more piece of business to take care of before we leave. What's that? We're going to fix it so uh, you don't double-cross anybody again. What are you talking about? You picked the wrong man, Jake. Now, wait a minute, Kurt. Put down that gun. You've got the wrong idea about something. Not about you. Let him have it and let's get out of here, boss. Oh, you're making a mistake. You've got to listen to me. Goodbye, Webster. <laughs> the... Oh, a mash man. Shot the gun right out of his hand. The Lone Ranger. Up with your hands. Yeah, don't shoot. Get his gun, Marshal. Right. <laughs> Well, everything's worked out fine, Mr. Webster. What are you talking about? We watched the boys close in on Kurt's camp before we started back here to make sure you were all right. You mean my men have been captured? Why, sure. You didn't think the trappers were really heading south this morning, did you? Huh? They made camp less than five miles out of town. Then they headed back to surround your men. And you planned this, Webster? No, of course not. It wouldn't have worked out without your help. Look, this is all a trick, Kurt. That masked man is a lone ranger, and he must have planned everything. I can't take the credit. 
I couldn't have done anything without your information. I never gave you information. You don't have to be afraid of Morgan now. He's under arrest, and so are all his men. Hey, listen to that. They're bringing them into town. We're certainly glad that we got here in time to save your life, Webster. Don't pay any attention to them, Kurt. First, you were going to have the soldiers capture us, but you were afraid that letter got into our hands when it was lost. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you cooked up this scheme. No, Kurt. By sending me to the gallows won't send, save you. You're under arrest. Anything you say will be used against you. It'll be used against him. Twenty years ago, his name was Ed Randolph. Shut up, you fool. He's wanted for murder in New Orleans. What? That does it. Well, your hunch was right, masked man. When I heard them talking up on the ridge. I knew that Kurt had something on him. You're heading for the gallows with Morgan, Webster. It's good riddance for the West. Here, Driscoll. Another double crossing. I didn't do anything. What about that letter? I didn't want to write it. That don't cut any ice with me. You did. Arrest him too, Marshal. He hired me to hold up the stage. And last year, he was mixed up in a bank robbery in Kansas City. That ought to be enough, Marshal. It sure is. The roundup's all finished. Come on, boys. Move along. Pete, Bill, the rest of you out there. Grab a hold of these hombres and march them along to jail. All right, come on. Well, tell I'll be saying goodbye, Johnny. Are you leaving? You won't have any more trouble in Mountain City. I'm sure of it. Now that we're rid of these coyotes. That's it, boys. Move them along. Uh, so long, mister. Goodbye and good luck. Thanks. Pretty big fella. Yep. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Get him up. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>